have research and data, but you don't need the research and data to know that we live in a time of stress and anxiety. It's on the rise. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has started its data dump, and many of you may have read that more than 8 million people in Australia have long-term health conditions, and guess what the leading health condition is? Mental health. And it affects more than 2 million um, Australians across the country. So that's one in 12 people. Stressful and anxious time, rough. And I've entitled my sermon today, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. And I'm tickled by that title, and it's not mine. I, I get it from a scientist, Robert Sawalski, who wrote a book of that name. And uh, I dare not uh, summarize his science too glibly, but his, his tenant is basically this, that if you are a zebra in the Kalahari, and you are being chased by a lion, and your blood pressure is 180 over 120, uh, you are not having a stress response, you are running for your life. <laughs> but the problem is that when, for us as well, if our blood pressure is 180 over 120 and we're being chased by a lion, we're not being, we're not being unreasonable either. We're also just running for our lives. But we create that same stress response um, that is every being chased by a lion, day by day, moment by moment. I noticed it in myself on Friday when I was late for an appointment and wanting quickly just to pick up one or two things from the store before I rushed there, and the gentleman in front of me started counting out his bill in coins. I mean, who pays with cash today anyway? <laughs> Do you know, like, how antiquated. <laughs> And then, oh my goodness, to count it out in 10 cent coins. <laughs> and he was deaf on top of that. Excuse me, sir, it's $2.70. You've only given me $2. What? It's $2.70, sir. Pardon? $2.70, sir. Great, that's $2.50, sir. It's $2.70. Gives another five cent piece. And oh my gosh, I'm tearing my hair out. I do this 40 times a day. I'm going to wear out the arteries <laughs> in my heart. And according to Robert in this book. So when I meditate on this text today, I find that I can tune in to uh, the feeling of stress and anxiety summarized by Martha. Notice how often she says the word me. I'm just looking up this gospel again. Watch how she says it. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. <laughs> so I wonder if you can taste the stress emanating from Martha. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself. But I wanted to shout to that gentleman in front of me, counting out his billing coins, do you not care that I'm late for an appointment? <laughs> yeah. The, the stress isn't good for us. So if I step into this text, the thing that stands out for me is Jesus' answer. Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. So it feels to me that this one thing is the answer to my stress and anxiety. This one thing 
seems like the doorway to in returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength. Feels like it's that doorway to that quietness and trust. So what is the one thing? God, yeah. But I would ask, Martha has God too. But perhaps just in a different way. I'm suggesting that the one thing is precisely that. One thing. One thing or oneness. When Jesus talks about the one thing or oneness, what he has in mind, I think, is mutual indwelling. I am in God. God is in me. You are in God. And we are in each other. Christ's most beautiful symbol for this is not only Mary enjoying that mutual indwelling at the feet of Jesus. Just as an aside, there's another layer here, of course, because this is the posture of a disciple. So we know that there weren't only 12 disciples, okay? And we know that they weren't all boys. There were many more, and we know that some of their names were Mary, Mary, Martha, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joanna, and Susanna, just as an aside. Now back to the text. (laughs) So Mary's in the apostle of true discipleship, mutual indwelling. Her in God, God in her, her in those around her, and all of us in God. The symbol that Jesus uses for this is the vine and the branches, He says in John 15, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me as I abide in you. And a few verses later, he will say, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Jesus will later proclaim that the Father and I are one. And that's as blasphemous today as it was then. Jesus does not see this as an exclusive privilege, but as something shared by all human beings. Jesus says, the Father and I are one. You and I also say, the Father and I are one. As for Jesus, so for us. For Jesus, there is no separation between humans and God. God is not up there with us down here. We are all in God, and God is in us. There is no separation because of this mutual inter-abiding, which expresses the indivisible reality of divine love. The one thing, or the oneness, means this. We flow into God, and God flows into us because it is the nature of of love to flow. And as we give ourselves into one another in this fashion, the vine gives life and coherence to the branch, while the branch makes visible what the vine is. In other words, we only see the vine as a vine when we witness the branches grow. A vine is merely an abstraction until there are actual branches to articulate its reality. The whole and the part live together in this mutual reciprocity, this mutual loving and being loved, each belonging to the other and each dependent on the other to show forth the fullness of love. And that's Jesus' vision of the one thing, Jesus' vision of oneness. No separation between God and us, and between us and each other. A oneness of human and divine. So this one thing, the oneness between human and human, is equally powerful. And so this is what the text is inviting us to do. It's inviting us into a deeper consciousness, a 
the transformation of the mind. Be transformed through the renewing of your mind, the Bible says. Paul will say, take on the mind of Christ. This mind of Christ is the different I. How Jesus defines his identity at this level of being, a Jewish follower of God, and how Jesus defines his identity at this level of being, are completely different. Martha, Mary. When our identity is at this level, the Father and I are one, you and I are one, God is in me, I am in God, we are in each other. There are no ulcers. There is no stress or anxiety. There is no distraction of the many, for we have found the one thing. And the moment in which we find it, we would know that we've had it all along. So in my Martha consciousness, I would ask the question, so how do I get there? <laughs> yeah? You, you can't get it. You can't earn it. It's merely given to you. The best we can do is nothing at all. It's to receive it with openness and gratitude. Acceptance. In the history of our faith, the ways in which people have prepared themselves for this gift have often included prayer, meditation, contemplation, the sacraments. So, fellow zebras, we'll end where we began. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be your strength.